See what I mean about a lot of the like education stuff as well being basically obvious? Oh, you should have a good title and thumbnail. Some people are paying money to learn that. Be brief, be bright, be fun, and be done. Okay, that's where I'm going wrong. <laughs> Stop bullying me in the comments, I can feel it. We're gonna hit like a content singularity at some point where it's like how to make content all the way down until the only content left is how to make content content. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Today, I thought we'd go viral. How to go viral. Step one, say how to go viral out loud enough times to get it into the, you know, build up some good SEO. <laughs> I know some of you like the sound of that. It sounds exciting. It sounds tasty. It sounds delicious. I don't know why two of those were edible descriptors. It doesn't matter. Today, we're really here to talk about the phenomena of how to go viral content, as in not viral content, but content that teaches or claims to teach viewers how to go viral. I call this a phenomena because just type how to go viral into YouTube and see how many hours worth of content there is. It seems like so many creators who have achieved some level of success or virality set about to teach those skills, often charging money for them. I think there are a few reasons for this and I don't think they're all bad, but I will explain that later. I thought first the honourable thing to do would be to pick one of these big how to go viral explainers and actually try it because maybe I'm completely wrong maybe you can follow a set of 10 easy tips and then just go viral on the internet basically either I'm wrong boohoo but I get a viral video out of it I don't know if I really want that to be honest we'll talk about that later as well or I'm right and then I'm right and this video goes as planned <laughs> I've picked out an article and a video uh, from a channel and a, a site, a blog, a company called vidIQ because they have an article and a video and I like having written stuff to go back to. So this chap at vidIQ has this video. They have 1.75 million subscribers. The video has 280,000 views. Weirdly, the video is from a year ago. The article is from December, just gone. But looking at, well, the channel name and the stuff they do, all of their content is about how to get views. Some of it, I'm sure, is genuinely helpful. However, this video is titled, This Proven Tactic Makes Your Videos Go Viral. And I suspect that's not true. All of their pop-ups in the side are like, small channels do this and the algorithm will love you. Get 100,000 subscribers in 100 days. I understand how enticing these can be because I'm looking at that gaming one and thinking, man, I wish I had more viewers on my gaming channel, Little Duck Gaming, where we play all sorts of fun. <laughs> no, but really, it's really good and I work really hard on those videos. You should go and check it out if you're interested in. Anyway, so we're going to watch this vidIQ video and, and look at this article and see if we can recreate our own viral video based on this advice. Quick shout out to my new sweater uh, before we start. It's okay guys, it's ironic, so it's fine. <laughs> I think this video will probably have genuinely useful information, uh, some stuff that is basically common sense, but I think the title is clickbait. And I think that's how this channel makes its money. So today we're talking about unreliable sources, clickbait, misinformation, how do we as consumers actually avoid falling for those traps in our everyday news and information sourcing, especially when our own news feeds are driven by algorithms and paid advertising? Well, that is why I have been using today's sponsor, Ground News. Ground News is a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer, sorry flurfers, on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. With access to over 50,000 news sources across the political spectrum, it allows you to compare headlines, and with every story comes a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources, and that's all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations. Here's a social media story that interests me, Facebook suspending a notoriously toxic influencer account. In this case, we have 12 sources, with 73% of the sources Sources leaning right. Underneath I can get a quick visual representation on where the sources lie on the bias distribution chart. This ownership chart shows us that a majority of the sources reporting on this story are owned by wealthy private owners. 38% billionaire, baby. 
Let's have a quick look at how the left and right cover the same story. For example, here leaning left, we have Facebook bans popular right-wing account libs of TikTok for violating community standards. And then this right-leaning article titled Facebook reinstates libs of TikTok after backlash gloating leftists eat crow. So it's very easy to see that the same story is being covered, but it sounds completely different with how the language is being framed. I can also see the factuality rating of both sources on the top right, and I can see that the right-leaning source Conservative News Today has a low factuality rate and a right-leaning bias, which is not my typical read. I can choose to open this article by The Messenger through Ground News, and sure enough, I get an overview that doesn't indicate any particular political opinion or bias. However, Ground News allows me not to leave anything to chance. I can head to their page for this source and get a full overview of the ratings. I can see here that two independent bodies have rated The Messenger center, while one has actually rated it right-leaning. This all helps me make proper, informed choices about my news sources, with Ground News having done all the hard work for me. One of my favourite features of Ground News is the blind spot feed. So this covers news disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. Thanks to algorithms, I'm generally delivered news from sources I've used before or that support my political leanings. That means I can miss news outside of my media bubble. Using the blind spot feature, I have a better understanding of the media environment of people with different views to me, which means more constructive dialogue with them, as well as challenging my own assumptions and biases. I encourage you all to check out the link in the description, ground.news slash Emma Thorne. I've had unlimited access to all the features Ground News has to offer, with the Vantage subscription, which has given me the tools I need to become a smarter news consumer. You can get the Vantage subscription too by subscribing through my link for 30% off. All the best features like the blind spot feed, which is about $5 a month. When you subscribe, you're not just supporting me in this channel, you're also supporting an independent platform trying to make the news more transparent. Do check it out. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Let's start with our friends here on vidIQ. So the whole concept behind a viral video is that you don't know it's going to go viral before... His name is Rob. Now we know. Before you publish it, right? Unless, of course, that is entirely predictable. So predictable, in fact, that we are... Why did he have to slap us in the face? ...as the creator of this video to send us loads of screenshots as it was going viral. vidiq.com slash install. They make some kind of software? Interesting. It's the story of the tallest tower mankind has ever built. And this video has over 3 million views. But it's not the video we're talking about today. I just like this image and this man's voice. It is the story of the men and women. Oh no, I like Rob a lot already. <laughs> okay, so Super Bowl. Options. Skip that to the was. end. This is a trend you can literally time to the hour, kickoff time. So to make sure YouTube knew precisely what the video was about, our creator launched it a day. Okay. So, okay, so, so far the tactic is planning for something that you know for sure will be trending on YouTube. That's a very rare event. I guess that would have to be with upcoming news sports. The Super Bowl is probably the biggest example that you could think of. I'm struggling to think of equivalents. Because what YouTube is going to do is take all of this recent positive data in terms of click-through rate, watch time and likes and prime it for this mega surge in search traffic. So I'm sure. trying to answer a question. How do you stream the Super Bowl for free? I already know that that's the problem that people are trying to solve. I've got to be honest, I paid pretty much no attention to this Super Bowl itself as Travis was sending me through all of his data. And when it comes to video- What a nerd! I, oh, I really like them. God damn it. Okay, fine. But I kind of wanted a non, because the Super Bowl's not coming up and I'm not going to be able to help anyone with the Super Bowl. So this isn't really like, this isn't a, a super useful proven tactic for general usage, I don't feel like. Videos going viral on YouTube. You might call this case study the perfect storm, albeit a little one. There is a lingering question. Does this video help Travis's channel? According to YouTube, if 100 people watch your videos this week, YouTube will share your content to 700 people next week. And so in theory, this video with a 130,000 views could generate up to a million impressions for Travis's content. Am I worried about this sending the wrong people to my channel? At the end of the day, I'm just trying to help people get the answer they're looking for. And in that, I decided to just put a little bit of information about my channel. And if anyone was interested in coming back, they could. I was pre-qualifying them to let them know what type of content I do. But it is a risk. Even in group coaching, we tell you, don't do a video outside of your niche. It's just not a good idea. Aha, two things. First of all, 
Finally, something that's a useful piece of advice that I was looking for. Don't do something outside of your niche. Having a video go viral and then being like, oh, I guess all of my videos have to be about this then. That's one of my cons of, of potentially going viral. So that's good. Secondly, oh, they do $150 a month coaching. What did I say earlier about how most of them do this? This how to go viral, how to get popular. Oh my God, if you make any kind of content online, your fucking DMs will be full of people being like, I can make you this many views per month. And they can't all be right. Maybe vidIQ is the one channel that can 100% make you go viral or whatever. Okay, so this isn't actually a, as useful a video as I was kind of hoping. I clicked on him again by mistake. Let's have a look at the article. What is a viral video? What causes a video to go viral? So Unruly, which is a marketing technology company, um found that super sharers, a small group of people who share videos in the first 48 hours, kickstart the viral process. Okay, that makes sense. Viral videos evoke strong emotions, which compel viewers to share within their own networks. Okay, here we go. How to make a video go viral. Unless it's the Super Bowl and your channel is somehow related to that in some way, their video wasn't that helpful. So let's see what we got. This kind of irritates me. This stuff is sort of sprinkled throughout where it's like, creating a viral video takes more than luck. And then near the top it was like, it isn't just about luck. Which kind of blows this whole thing out of the water, because at least they're acknowledging in some small places throughout that it is mostly about luck. How are we supposed to go viral if part of it is just luck? YouTube educator. See what I mean? People do that for a living. And again, you can know things about SEO and the algorithm and, and marketing and you can know things that are helpful and some people do that as a job and that's legitimate marketing is a real field but like there's so many fucking people who are like YouTube teachers and coaches and I'm gonna just blindly guess that maybe 5% of them are worth whatever they charge and the rest of it is bullshit. That would be my guess. Maybe Sean Cannell is one of the 5%, who knows. Some ingredients are nice to have, but you can only mimic a dish when you have the main ingredients. Okay, let's write this down. This is important. And by write this down, I mean put it in a Google Docs because uh, it's 2024, I don't write. Choose something that resonates with your target audience. Probably probably gonna be something about um, skepticism, the Bible, for, for my crowd. Unfortunately, we're a little bit too niche over here to go probably viral viral, but great title and thumbnail that kind of fucking stands to reason. But OK, see what I mean about a lot of the like education stuff as well being basically obvious. It's not obvious for everyone. And if it's not obvious for you, then that is useful. But oh, you should have a good title and thumbnail. Some people are paying money to learn that. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Um, engaging hook, yeah, that's why I do my this genuine tips from Emma. And engaging hook is really important. That's why I put like a, a coming up at the beginning of my videos and kind of include like some little best bits or things that I think are, are funny or really interesting at the start. That's a genuine tip for you bros who want to start going viral. <laughs> Not to go viral, but maybe to keep people watching. Um, emotional value. The viewer leaves the video feeling transformed. <laughs> Okay, I'll try. Create compelling, shareable videos. What does that mean? Evoke strong emotions such as laughter, awe, or surprise. Try to be entertaining, informative, or thought-provoking while keeping the video short and concise. What this typically comes down to is telling a good story. Make video viewers feel giggly, happy, or sad, but no matter what, make them feel something. You can even surprise them with plot twists and cliffhangers. <laughs> Okay, so I guess sticking with the biblical theme, surprising, giggly, giggly. There's not that much to giggle about in the Bible. Let's go with, I've been reading a lot about forgeries, biblical forgeries and, and the misattributions in the Bible, who did or didn't write which gospel. I think that's really interesting. I think some of my viewers will be interested. So let's mark that down as a something to do. Use hashtags. Do you see what I mean about the fucking basically obvious shit? Use hat tags, choose the right platform. Well, we want to go viral on YouTube, it's not a question. Search engine optimization. Keywords, descriptions, thumbnails. Yes, some of that was in earlier bits. The final part is to analyze how your video performs. 
Four simple steps how to create a viral video. Here are the four ingredients of viral videos, which I call the perfect video recipe. One, the big idea. This includes coming up with a strong topic and having a great title and... See, here's the thing that gets me right. A lot of this, like, how to go viral, how to become famous, how to get success, whatever. All this stuff kind of blows me away because, like, these... Isn't this how everyone approaches all their videos? Maybe I'm just, like, tooting my own horn or, like, so, or maybe I sound like a fucking nerd for doing this. I, don't, I, I can't work it out, but I want every video I make to have an engaging title, a good thumbnail, to be interesting content, to be something that I think people will want to see, something that interests me, and have some value. Like, this almost presupposes that people are making, like, whatever content, just hoping... Maybe it is for those people. It's people that are just, like, firing out, I don't know, just copying other stuff, just, like, coming up with lame stuff. It's like, okay, if you want to go viral, you have to actually make something good. And people are like, oh, my God, I have to work on this to make something interesting <laughs> like it needs to be a interesting topic and have a good thumbnail is all the advice we've gotten so far fine no fine good this, this is great thumbnail two the hook the first the hook, 15 again. to 30 seconds of your video is incredibly important so take some time to craft it three the content be brief be bright be fun and be done okay that's where i'm going wrong <laughs> be brief be fun, be done. I'll try that in my... I'll write that down in my notes for my viral video. Okay, guys? I understand. You can... You don't... <laughs> Stop bullying me in the comments. I can feel it. Be brief. Be fun. Be done. A lesson for us all. <laughs> Predetermine which video you're going to link to on your YouTube channel at the end of the video you're creating. Oh, um, I think that must be specifically related to shorts because shorts can link back to uh, a specific video of your choosing. Well, that'll link back to this video, I guess. That doesn't really make sense. That doesn't matter. That's not, that doesn't relate to the, the video itself going viral. Well, we've got some tips. Here, look, Tube Buddy has a uh, seven steps. Let's just look at these and see if there's anything here that uh, wasn't in what we learned already. The three W's. Who's the video for? What problem are you solving? Why should someone care to watch? What problem are you solving? I get so many examples. It's like the best way to make videos that people will watch is to make videos about how to make videos that people will watch. We're going to hit like a content singularity at some point where it's like, it's just how to make content content all the way down until the only content left is how to make content content. The idea, the topic. Think about what problem you're solving. Fake gospels. That's catchy, that's kind of like, it's bordering on clickbait, but it won't actually be clickbait because that's genuinely the problem we're gonna solve. That's what we're doing, okay? And then the first, what did they say? One of them said like eight to 10 seconds. One of them said f up to 15 or 30 seconds. I guess if we're doing like a, a short, how long can YouTube shorts be? I should know that kind of thing. Who wrote the Gospels? That's what we're, we're going with. Who wrote the Gospels? <laughs> the answer is we don't know, which is a great hook. Okay, the hook, the hook. The hook is that we don't know, but it most likely wasn't Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Is this, are you hooked? If I like wear a hat and I, and I point and I say it in a funky way, is that, are you interested? Making viral content is hard. Interesting storyline. The storyline is how the books came to be attributed to those. Uh, they were written anonymously, which was that, and that anonymity was respected for decades. By the end of the second century, these books had been attributed to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why? There were so many gospels floating around. It became important to identify the correct ones, the non-heretical ones, by giving them uh, reliable authors, by naming them reliably. But I've got to say that in a way that is engaging and fun and within like 60 seconds. <laughs> if I just, let's just write out some notes. We can always record stuff and delete stuff. That's allowed. It's not like a challenge. We're doing, this is not what we're doing. I'll just get on with this, shall I? And, and we'll work it out. Okay, so what I've done is I've kind of compiled what I know into, I've got this, I'll just, do you know what, I'll just show it to you, because who cares, right? I've compiled my notes and then kind of shrunk it down into what I think will fit into a short, snappy video. Be brief, be fun, be done. This is such a challenge for me. Who knew this would turn into such a challenge? So I've squished it all down into uh, basically just a little tidbit of when each gospel was probably written with a little hint as to why, apart from the date, it 
wouldn't have been written to by who it was attributed to. It's, it's such a topic that actually, if you wanted to talk about it properly and have a, a big discussion, uh, that could be like a two-hour video. So I don't know what this. <laughs> this is probably a terrible example. Like the Super Bowl was like the ideal dream version of going viral. This is like my fucking stupid idiot version. But if it goes viral esque, we, we've got we can do the title. Thumbnail isn't get if we do it as a short thumbnail's not going to be a thing. The hook is fine. It's not really going to have a storyline because I can't really tell the story because I was going to talk about why and I wrote notes about how the gospels got attributed the way they did. Basically like process of elimination as to who was supposed to be a close follower of Jesus, etc, etc. But that's going to be like longer than 60 seconds. I don't think I'm going to be able to I guess I could try, but I don't think I'm going to be able to fit a storyline into here and emotional value they, there's not really it's just sort of it might be interesting am i like the worst example for this ever i'm gonna get a coffee i'm gonna eat a biscuit because turns out trying to go viral is exhausting and then we're gonna we're gonna record this okay i've just done a really awkward job of recording a short on my phone you can tell i'm not used to it jesus i spoke pretty fast to try and get all the information in i could the final strategy, according to the guides we've looked at, is to see how it does. So I guess I'll edit it and see how it does. <laughs> Future Emma here, with our results. Now, first things first, we can see this has 45% higher views than my other shorts. Not surprising, considering my other shorts have been like, a joke I wanted to share, something I thought would be funny within a niche of a niche. This does show what we suspected earlier, that making a video with an eye on what people might find interesting help the video does better. <laughs> it's been a few days, it's got 8.9k views, more excitingly we gained two subscribers and this is an insight into how much money YouTubers can make, uh, 74p estimated revenue. Even within this niche I think it's fair to say this didn't come close to what we might call viral. This is pretty much exactly what I expected. The basic advice of making something that you are interested in and you think will interest people within your niche, um, having a good hook at the beginning, those things are likely to increase views. They're not going to make you an overnight sensation. You might get two subscribers out of it. That comes from me as a person with already over 100,000, so it's definitely not an exercise in going viral. I also wanted to point out, because I didn't mention this in the video, per the latest data from Social Blade, they put the number of content creators on YouTube at approximately 61.1 million. Just throwing that out there as a bit of context for the uh, competition you might face if you are hoping to become the next Mr. Beast. There was technically some good, if in my opinion, common sense advice in there, but we did not exactly go viral. <laughs> Thanks Future Emma. Wow, that was... I'll record two versions. That was really great. That was terrible. That didn't work at all. We can use one of those. <laughs> Maybe we'll just put them all in. It might be fun. Anyway, now let's talk for a second about why there are so many of these how to go viral videos, courses, $150 a month coaching sessions. First of all, people want to make money. Those same people know that a lot of people want to get famous on YouTube. Any channel that does like how to blah 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 and successfully has a couple of big hits, especially if they get to like a million subscribers or something, they then have the authority to claim that they can teach those things. So some of it, probably a grift. Probably a lot of it is a grift. I don't think everyone making this kind of how to go viral content is deliberately misleading people, however, I think they might be slightly deceiving themselves. That's not too controversial a thing to say. Essentially what I'm talking about here is survivorship bias. Survivorship bias is a logic error, which is basically where you focus on uh, entities that did succeed at something and ignore the entities or overlook the entities that did not. What's a better way to explain this? When we look at the survivors, in this case the, the succeeders maybe we'll call them, that's a terrible word, let's not call them that. If you're looking at Mark Zuckerberg as an example of how to achieve greatness, you're overlooking the people who have lived a similar life, made similar decisions, uh, attempted similar things and failed, of which the number is much much greater. And essentially a big part of what you're doing is overlooking luck as a factor. The reason I think that part of this is sort of 
subconsciously intentional is because I think a lot of people, people like to feel like they've worked hard. They don't want to feel like they've been given something when the reality is that people like Mark Zuckerberg, Mr. Beast in this scenario is probably a much more appropriate. <laughs> you don't want to feel that luck is at the centre of your success because then it feels like your hard work is being overlooked. If you can set out a list of here's all the incredibly hard work that I put in, here's all the steps that I took, so if you just did the same thing, you would succeed too. It does discount luck as a factor. Even me with my silly little channel, I can point to certain things I did. If you ever want a follow-up to this with some genuine tips and advice for YouTube, which ew, based on the discussion we're having now, sounds gross, there's a million of those videos. If you want like a genuine one that does not discount the value of luck, um, let me know down below. I did certain things, certain things happened at certain times, part of that was luck. Absolutely. The only reason I can make this silly little video and have anyone see it is partly based on luck. There are things in timing, yes you can plan a how to watch the Super Bowl video if you know the Super Bowl is coming up, but that's a once a year thing that a lot of channels are going to be competing for the views on. Similarly, advice on how to make better videos, on how to better appeal to people and present yourself so that more people when they see your videos they click on them, so that more people when they click on your videos are likely to subscribe or watch others, that's 100% valid advice. It doesn't affect getting eyes on your videos in the first place. You need the combination of things, you, you need that good advice. Well, not always. Some shit stuff goes viral, thus proving the power of luck. <laughs> but to have something sustainable, you do need that combination of good practice and luck. That's just how it goes. That does not mean that a Mr. Beast or a... what the fuck were they called? TV, QI, IQ, vidIQ. Sorry, vidIQ. They seemed, they seemed like nice chaps. That doesn't mean that people like the guys working at vidIQ or a Mr. Beast, etc, etc, don't work incredibly hard, that they don't have a really good eye on SEO and their analytics and the best times to post. You can get help on all of those things for free all across the internet. It can't account for the luck factor. You need both. This is all to say I just wish that there was more transparency about the value of luck. It's sort of, the vidIQ is good because it kind of hints at the need for luck, but it does kind of say, okay, luck is a thing, but you also need this thing, and this thing might be even more important. It does kind of suggest that, like, oh, but doing the right things is even better than... I would say that in terms of going viral, the luck is probably, probably higher up there, right? That brings us to the question of whether going viral is necessarily what you want. Me and most of my YouTube buddies have not had a viral moment, and I am super grateful for that. I've talked to a couple of fellow creators uh, about this phenomenon, and we've talked about how, how pleased we are to have had that steady increase. Uh, the reason is because how many times on this channel do I go to a, a huge channel to react to them, and they've got 2 million subscribers, and their videos are getting like 10k views, or a little more, a little less, you know? Fewer views than than mine, even, at a much smaller subscriber rate. Having one viral video, as again the vidIQ guys said earlier, doesn't mean that people will come back and watch the rest of your content. It means that more eyes are going to get on your content for a while, and that might really help, but it also means more scrutiny. Somebody somewhere will not like that video that you done, and they will be very annoyed that it's showing up everywhere on their feed, and they will spend their day going back through 10 years of your social media to find something to cancel you with. Similarly, some people are just mean. And if you have, to some people, a funny haircut, or a stupid shirt, welcome to an unprecedented amount of people taking the piss out of you. I am a silly little guy, but I'm also quite thick-skinned at this point, and in general, I don't particularly care what people think, and still, sometimes, the comments, even on the just gradual increase of numbers of douchebags, they still, mm, they can, they can hit, they can be spicy. Imagine suddenly having a million people with all their ugly opinions and thoughts. Whereas the slow, gradual increase of a nice niche community who share common interests and enjoy your content for you and, and your ideas and so on, you do build that little community. I just said that 
twice and therefore made it kind of redundant, but the thought was there. <laughs> there is something to be said for community building, is what I'm trying to say. That doesn't mean that going viral is always bad. It's not even just an internet thing, you know? It's a, it's a, a life thing. Look at the guy who played Jar Jar Binks was so horrifically bullied for just being in that role that he nearly took his own life. Look at the trauma people who became, like, memes have been through. It's a scary world out there. The idea of going viral, of everyone, at least for a brief time, knowing who you are, having eyes on you, and being able to pick you apart piece by piece as a result is, like, terrifying to me. I hate that idea. Let me know what you think down below, first of all, about going viral. Yay or nay. Also, what are your thoughts on these companies and influencers and so on who do paid coaching, how to go viral online courses and videos and things like that? Let me know your thoughts because I obviously am instinctively ick. I feel ick generally on this kind of topic, which is why while I think it would be a good idea to share my genuine story on how I went from zero views to a few views, and I think it would be beneficial to actually have that discussion while factoring in luck and sh demonstrating the the lucky chances and the things that happened that were out of my control or I couldn't have predicted. It also just makes me feel gross to think about doing a video that's like, how do you get views or, you know, because I just instantly I'm like, eh, it's a grift. It's a grift. It's a money grab. It's for clicks. Like, I because I just think like, I don't know, like 95% of that shit is just cyclical thing because I think it's people trying to get views by teaching people how to get views. It just, it, oh, it's frustrating, it's confusing, I don't like it. Tell me what you think. Am I completely wrong? Am I off base? Did Mr. Beast teach you how to go viral and it changed your life and now you're a better person? Uh, let me know. If, if that is you, I'd really want to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Do leave your thoughts down below. Do consider giving this video a like. Remember to check out Ground News via the link down below. If you did enjoy this video, do consider giving it a like. Maybe subscribe so you don't miss future videos. I do have a couple of other channels. If you're interested, I have Emma Thorne Backstage, which is a little bit more lifestyle-y. You get some more updates over there. I open my PO Box mail, all stuff like that. As I mentioned earlier, I do also have a gaming channel, Little Duck Gaming. It's very fun. It's very good. You should check it out. The best way to support this channel is via the Patreon. With that, I would love to give a big old thank you and a shout out to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. <laughs>